Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more Airfly FS2. So sorry that I missed a couple of weeks there, however, it was circumstances beyond my control. There were some issues that IPAX needed to take care of, and until they took care of them, I couldn't actually make any videos. So there was a little bit of a delay, but I figured that'll keep you all from burning out on Airfly FS2, or at least give you the opportunity to watch what you may have missed, and of course, pick up the sim yourself and try it out. Alright, but we are back, and today we're going to be doing a little uh, commuter hop from this location, which is Aspen, Pitkin County Airport, Regional Airport, or Kilo Alpha Sierra Echo, and we're going to take our passengers to Denver. Yes, that's right, Denver, Colorado. I've been hearing lots of good things about the 3D artwork in Denver, so I think it's about high time that we head over there and check it out. The bird that we're going to be flying in today, this is, of course, the Beechcraft King Air. I don't know if you remember back in the Utah video, the Corsair video that I did where I flew around Monument Valley, I had mentioned that we were going to take a look at some of the uh, twin turboprops that uh, IPAX has in this sim. And as you can see, this one looks like the Starship Enterprise. It's got all kinds of funky gadgets and switches and everything. I'll be honest with you folks, I don't know what most of this stuff does. I'm banking on the fact that I know how to fly an aircraft so I can pretty much pick it up as I go along, but some of the subtle nuances of the Beach King Air escaped me. So if you are a hardcore Beechcraft fan and you love flying this thing, spare yourself the trouble of pointing anything out that I may mess up on. So I'm just going to give you that disclaimer from now. But I will also be showing you some of the uh, non-working areas of the aircraft, that being the relaxing areas of the aircraft. So we'll see if we can bring her up to cruise, and then I will show all of that off in a moment. But before we can do anything else, we're going to need to take off, aren't we? Just as an FYI, Aspen is at a whopping 7,750 feet above sea level. This is going to be a very interesting takeoff, and I'm warning you ahead of time, just in case. Okay, before we get going, let me make sure I have all the lights on that I need to have on. Alright, our landing lights are there, our taxi lights, we'll go ahead and flip those on. Uh, beacon, why is my strobe on? We'll turn the strobe off, we'll leave the beacon on, we'll flip-flop that once we get to the runway threshold. And let me see if I can zoom our map in and out here. There it is. Okay, so that is our flight plan. We'll zoom it in a little bit further if we can. That looks to be as close as I can get it. All right. Engines both appear to be behaving themselves, so I'm not going to worry about them at all. Flaps, we will need to get down one notch. There we go. Incidentally, that nifty little FMC, while it does look great in VR, it doesn't do a damn thing. So I'm hoping at some point in time, uh, IPAX will begin introducing functionality for FMCs in smaller aircraft such as this. I couldn't even tell you for sure if the Boeing 737, the 747, or the Airbus A320 even have working FMCs because, let's face it folks, I have zero desire to fly any of the airliners, so you're not going to see any videos of that. And needless to say, I have no intentions of checking to see if their FMCs work right. So there, I've said it. I'm burnt out on airliners. Alright, but one thing I'm not burnt out of are twin turboprops. So, let's go ahead and hit the brakes. Give it a little bit of power. And we'll see if we can head to our takeoff runway, which today should be runway 33. We're going to travel to the north. We certainly don't want to travel to the south. Look at that big imposing mountain over there. Alright. Now the volume on this one's a little bit weird. Since we don't have functioning prop pitch or mixture controls, it's kind of hard to describe. I guess depending on where you have your throttle determines how the engine sounds. 
not sure how that relates to real life, so I'm not going to judge too harshly on this. She does seem a little bit sensitive on that nose gear steering, however, so I'm going to pull us back so that way we're not going too fast. Probably taxiing at about 12 or so knots right now. All right, quick look outside while we make our way to our runway. Okay, we should be nearing the threshold. I think there are two turnoffs, like right next to each other, so I'll have to see if I can find them. Alright, that is not it. It's probably coming up. I still can't get over that engine, though. That's a little odd. Not gonna lie, folks, that is a little odd. One thing I will give the props to IPAX, they've been working on the runway and taxiway lights. Now, unfortunately, you can still see that those 3D models are still floating. Hopefully they'll fix that at some point in time. But they've also started to introduce the green centerline lights on a taxiway, which is a good thing. So I'm glad they did that. Uh, this looks like the threshold, so we're going to go ahead and turn here. Actually, I'm going to hold short because that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so... Beacon, turn you off. Strobe, turn you on. Taxi light, turn you off. Landing lights, turn you on. And let me see. I may or may not use the autopilot. I might use it while we're at cruise, but I think while we get up to cruise, I will more than likely leave it on manual. So let me see if I can set our cruise altitude. I'm thinking about 16,000 should be good for us. These peaks vary anywhere from about 9,000 to about 14, at the most 15,000. I don't think we're going to be passing over anything that I'll need to adjust my cruise altitude for. Alright, everything looks pretty much set. Naturally there's no traffic, but force of habit, I have to check just to be sure. Okay, so we'll come off the brakes. And we'll get into position. And I have a special little camera that I found that I'm going to be using as part of our little takeoff here. Longtime viewers of my channel will instantly recognize the camera view that I'm going to be showing you. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, we've got to line up. That is an awfully long runway displacement, huh? I'm starting to wonder whether I'm going to need all of that distance. We are at 7,800 feet up. Okay. Let's see if I can get us dead center. All right. You know what? Right there is probably as good as it's going to get. Okay, folks. You know what it's time for. Breaks down and throttles up. And we are airborne, and according to my little flight plan here, we are going to need to swing out a bit to the right. 
I'm going to keep her on manual for the time being. I kind of like uh, having con direct control as I bring us up to altitude. I am going to give us a bit more throttle though because we're only at about 80% uh, throttle. So we'll pull it up to about 95% throttle. There we go. That should give us the speed that we need. So our first stop is going to be Red Table VOR, which will be in this direction that I'm lazily banking us towards. And I've explained the Red Table VOR before. That is one of the major ones for doing any kind of an approach into Aspen. It also happens to be not that high up, relatively speaking, as far as the Rockies go. So that's what makes it a pretty convenient... Uh, waypoint or VOR for us here. We should also be passing by the Rodi Reservoir at some point in time on our way to Denver. And I'll point that out if we are so fortunate enough to see it. The Rodi Reservoir is what provides the water for this neck of the woods. Alright, so I need to keep my eyes out for 16,000. Our speed is just shy of about 110 knots. Trying to keep us on a pretty stable pitch here. However, we do have some thermals. Not a whole heck of a lot because it's still early morning, as I'm sure you can see. But there might just be enough for us to get knocked around a little bit here. 2,500. Why, thank you, sir. And that actually reminds me, we are over 10,000 now, so let me go ahead and kill our landing lights. You can see the bumpiness that I was referring to earlier. That's not me yanking the stick all over the place. That's me trying to keep us stable here. Alright, according to this, I'm a little bit to the right, of course, so... I set ourselves up to a heading of about 3, 4, 5. That should do the trick. Somewhere up there on top of one of those peaks is Red Table VOR. So we're going to be overflying it momentarily. But for now, let's take a quick look outside. Okay, folks. And just off to the right there, you will see the Rodi Reservoir that I was telling you about earlier. So yes, that reservoir does provide all the water for this area. And let's see, we are at 13.5. So yeah, as soon as we hit Red Table, we are going to swing out to the right. So we're going to be heading pretty much due east on our way to Denver. It's going to be a relatively short hop. Of course, we'll pick up a bit more speed once we actually reach the cruise here. But I'm also not trying to lose a whole lot of airspeed as we climb, so that's why I'm only keeping us at about a 5 degree pitch here. But if you look ahead, right down there, that is actually where that VOR is located. Don't ask me how I know that, because I have never been to Colorado in real life, but I've just seen that thing on maps so many times that I just know that's it. <laughs> Let's take a look at it from the outside here. Okay, now it's time for us to swing out to the right as we pass over Red Table. Some of the more jagged peaks of the Rocky Mountains are off in this direction, but as soon as we pass what they call the Front Range, then we're going to be needing to make a descent into Denver, the Mile High City. And since we're almost to altitude, I think what I'll do is kick in this autopilot. It should be relatively easy for me to do. 
pretty sure it's not much different than, say, a Boeing or an Airbus autopilot. So there we go. I think that should do the trick. Yeah, we're at 15.5 right now, so a little bit more climby-climby. Um, there we go, FMS. Okay, so that should center us up on our flight plan. I don't see any immediate mountain peaks in my way, so we should be fine. 15.8. Let's get our altitude hold on. There we go, 16,000 feet, just like that. And wow, look at that. Look at that. See, this is the major reason to get the Colorado DLC. And I will remind you folks, that is free. 100% free of charge. But look at all of this amazing beauty around here. Now, I still, during my day job, have to call um, providers in... Colorado. Providers, of course, being doctors and various other medical specialties. So I hear the names of all of these places all the time. One of the first things that I do when I get home is I hop in Airfly FS2, pop into Colorado, and see if I can find some of these places just so I can have an idea of where it is that I'm talking to. And folks, I gotta tell you, these doctors live in some incredible scenery. Holy wow. Absolutely million dollar scenery here. This is to die for. Colorado has definitely been one of the best things that IPAX has brought out for Airfly FS2. And granted, I know a number of you still want to see some other states. For example, I know there's one person in particular who's watching who would definitely like to see Idaho. For those of you who want to see other states, just be patient a little bit. I'm pretty sure that IPAX is going to be working on that stuff. I don't have any kind of time frame, and even though I am active on the forums, I generally try to stay out of their way so that way they can concentrate on making the sim better instead of having to listen to my million requests for this, that, and the other thing. Still waiting for a Tomcat, by the way. <clears throat> oh, and that helicopter as well, too. From my understanding, that's going to be coming at some point in time soon as well. I don't know any of the details for it, but suffice to say, as soon as it's available, you will definitely be seeing it here on this channel. In fact, you might even be seeing it first on this channel. No, I'm just saying. Alright, so there we got the majestic Rocky Mountain Peaks up ahead. This area looks like it's a little bit more desolate than some of the other areas that we've overflown. Still just as gorgeous though. I can only imagine what this all looks like in winter with snow-capped peaks. It's gotta be pretty cool. It looks like 16,000 was a good choice as far as altitude. Sure, if I were in something a little bit more powerful, I could probably get up higher. In fact, I could probably take this one up higher, but I really don't feel like doing it. I think this is like the perfect altitude for me to do a little bit of sightseeing with you all. Speaking of which, how about we do a little bit of sightseeing from the outside? Alrighty folks, since we have a little bit of time, the other thing I wanted to show you was the interior of this aircraft. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you have a King Air, 
you definitely have it because you're into the finer things in life. So I want to take a quick look at some of the other views in this aircraft. And let's start with the co-pilot view. Okay, so we are here in the co-pilot seat. And of course, if I look over to my left, you'll see uh, our autopilot, as I like to call him. So yeah, pretty m neat setup that they've got here. Gotta say, I like that. I really do like that. Of course, unfortunately, none of the uh, fuses work, and as I mentioned before, the uh, fuel and the pitch aren't really modeled in this aircraft. But with that having been said, I'm sure as time goes on and IPAX adds more and more to this aircraft, we will have full functionality eventually. I would really love to see some more work done on like the FMCs and so on, because navigation is critical to flying. But we'll see what IPAX can pull off for us here. All right, let's hop in the back. Okay, so here is the seat that I have been waiting for. This is outstanding. I love that I've got little cup holders here. The only thing I'm missing is a pretty nice glass of uh, Chardonnay. That'll make my trip a little bit quicker here. But yeah, this is a million dollar view right here. Wow. You know, that's the awesome thing about this particular flight simulator over all others. When I'm sitting down here in the back of the aircraft, this actually feels like I'm really flying. Too cool, absolutely too cool. I'm sure if there was a lot of turbulence, I'd probably start getting airsick. Nah, who am I kidding? I don't get airsick. <laughs> Let's check out the other seat. I'm assuming there is one. Yep, sure enough, there is the opposite side. Very nice, very nice. Now I don't know which one I like more, the left side or the right side, huh? Either way, we still have an amazing view in front of us here, and to the off to both sides. Wow, it's pretty cool. Now, of course, I still have that uh, helmet, mount dis helmet mounted display, HMD, which you cannot see, and it tells me that our next waypoint I am approximately about 8 nautical miles from. That is the FUNDS waypoint, F-U-N-D-S. Oh wow, I didn't even realize there's a little seat back there. There's a little sideways seat. Huh. And I wonder what's back there. Is that like our bathroom and so on? Can't even tell. Hmm. But I do know our door is on the opposite side there. Wow. This is wonderful. This is a Kodak moment here. Pardon me, folks. I've got to snap some pictures. This is me, Belgio, the virtual tourist. I'm supposed to be flying the aircraft, but instead I'm back here drinking Chardonnay and taking pictures. <laughs> Love it. All right, let's get back to the cockpit because I do believe I see some mountains up ahead and I'm thinking that my calculations for our cruise altitude might have been incorrect. Okay, so we are at funds right now, and it looks like I was worried for no reason, because those peaks that were directly ahead of us are now sliding off to the left. Still looks like we have a bit of a mountain ridge in front of us, however, I should be able to adjust for that. Matter of fact, I think I might do that right now. Let's see if we can bring her up another thousand feet, and we should be good to go. There we go, 17,000, hit our VS, and we'll start pulling her up. About 500 feet per minute should be fine. There we go. 
Alright, so that's a little bit higher than I thought, but we're still okay. We're still doing great. Alright, so that should bring us up to about 17,000 feet above sea level. And that should help us get over the front range here. Once we get past the front range, the entire plain where, Del where uh, Denver is situated should open up. The only time I've ever seen this in real life, I was flying over it at about 35,000 feet. So, unfortunately, I didn't have nearly as much of an impact as right now. And it would figure I have to do this virtually to really get up close and personal with Colorado. Huh. But if nothing else, I can give a huge shout out to IPAX for even coming up with Aerofly FS2. Because this is exactly what my Oculus Rift was made for. This is just tailor-made for it. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I have noticed since the last update the FPS has dipped just a little bit. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but I'm sure IPAX will address it. The other issues that they had were a little bit more critical, and they did manage to take care of that in record time. These are the things that I've come to expect from IPAX. They've really set themselves apart as a bona fide developer that really cares about its customer base. I appreciate that. I really do. Alright, let's see where we're headed. Next waypoint is called Hilton. Huh. Wonder if it's any relation to the hotel. Anyway, it's about 21 nautical miles away. And I'm gonna zoom this out and see what our approach into Denver is gonna look like. Okay. It looks like after Hilton, we're just going to go straight for about the same distance, so about 20, maybe 30 miles. Then we're going to hang a left. A very sharp left, apparently. Okay. So depending on how these mountains look ahead of us, Hilton might be our top of descent. We'll find out in about 19 miles. folks looks like we are almost there I would say probably about 10 minutes to go till we touch down if it feels like it's dragging on a little bit too much you will not need to subject yourself to it I will simply do the magic of editing and that should take care of that but I don't know if you could see well we'll use our lens flare here as my guide okay so you see the big red and green superimposed circles there Right there, where I'm having it point, all of that is the beginning of Denver. Can't really see it so well because of the haze, although I will say this haze makes everything look absolutely realistic here. It feels like I'm flying in Colorado. Love it. So yeah, we're approaching Denver as soon as we pass this uh, remaining portion of the front range here. And as many people as the city of Denver has, as soon as you get out of Denver city limits and then onto this side of the mountains, a handful of people live here. It's the wildest thing. Colorado just has like that corridor of population, as I like to call it. Right around this dividing area here, there's a ton of people that live up and down the mountain range. Not so much once you get into the mountain range. Of course, there's places like Aspen, Telluride, um, Eagle County, Garfield County, you know, all of those little areas there that have um, civilization. But look at what's dividing them. You have all these impressive rugged peaks 
In a way, it's kind of like the eastern United States, in particular areas like Pennsylvania and New York. You know, the area that I live in, in Pennsylvania, you have all this population broken up geographically because of the fact that you've got mountain peaks and hills interspersed between the little boroughs and towns. Colorado seems to do things a little bit differently, but it's also very similar in that aspect. Like, I can look at this area and just tell there is nobody that lives over here. Although I do also see what appears to be ski trails, is that correct? Yeah, that does kind of look like it would be a ski trail, huh. Or a ski course, whatever you call it. I don't ski, so naturally I have no idea what the correct terminology is for that. Alright, one thing I do do is I do like to fly. And we are about three miles away from Hilton, so I am going to start making my preparations to descend. Um, I don't remember exactly how high off the ground Denver is, but I'm thinking if I bring it down to at least 10,000, we should be good. And we'll examine from there. Alright, so 10,000 it is. Pull the power back. And let's go vertical speed. Pull us down. 1,000 feet per minute. Okay, this thing says we've got about 31 nautical miles to go before we will be making our left turn, our left base, to final. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mile High City, the city of Denver, Colorado. That is about as much urban sprawl as I've seen in places like Florida. Wow. This goes to show you, whenever you have wide open spaces, humans will build all over it. Hmm. Alright, please fasten your seatbelts, everyone. We are coming in to land. Let's see what we've got here. We're about 21 nautical miles out from our turn. And I know that Denver is a huge, huge, huge piece of real estate. The airport I'm talking about. The city, of course. Yeah, that speaks for itself. You can see just how massive this place is. But the airport is on a lot of real estate. And I know that it is to the east of the city. So I'm sure we'll come up on it shortly. In the meantime, let me see how we're doing with our descent here. Coming down at a pretty healthy pace, about 1,600 feet per minute. And we're going to stop it at about 10,000 feet. Should be able to come into the pattern with that. Alright, so we're at 11,000 now. I'm going to go ahead and take the liberty of turning our landing lights back on. I'm also going to get the taxi lights on, that way I can just turn off the landing lights once we are down and on the taxiway. Denver is going to be a very long taxi before I get to a point where I can park, so to be honest with you folks, I am probably not going to show all of that. Because this video is starting to get a little bit longer. I figured we would be kind of fast since we're in a turboprop. That doesn't appear to be the case though. High altitude counts for something. Alright, but if you will cast your eyes in that direction, you will see downtown Denver.
Alrighty, folks, we are almost there. So I'm going to start pulling back our throttle here a little bit, because it looks like we've got about 10 miles to go. Airport is right over there. If you look at my little lens flare, it should tell you precisely the area that we're going to. There are a lot of runways at this airport. So we're going to choose the one that is going to be the closest to us heading north. So that should be runway 34 left. I'm going to turn off our altitude hold here, or at least attempt to. Actually, I might need to just turn off the autopilot altogether, so let me go ahead and do that. Alright, I think that'll do it. Let's try a wing wag here. Yes, okay. I am in full control of the aircraft. Probably should have done this before taking the autopilot off. There we go. Okay. Now, if I'm not too mistaken, this airport up ahead, uh, Kilo, Bravo, Kilo, Foxtrot, is an Air Force facility. We'll try not to get into too much trouble by flying past it here. Give them a wide berth. But yeah, there is Denver International. Okay. Now is probably not a good time to wonder what the uh, flap speeds and gear speeds are on this thing. Hmm. Should have checked the manual. But actually, I don't think there is much of a manual for this one. Which brings to mind an interesting point as far as Aerofly FS2. Not everything has proper documentation, so to speak. There are some aircraft that you're pretty much just winging it. And then there's others where there's, like, full documentation on how to use the system. The Dash 8, for example, is a very good example of something that is pretty much set up to where you can do everything that you can do with this aircraft, with that aircraft. But again, some of the other aircraft in the stable, not so much. Alright. Here we go. We're going to try and do this somewhat professionally here. So we've got our localizer swinging to the left. We're going to slowly turn around and join it. And there's our destination, folks. Denver International Airport. Alright, now the real question, is 34 on the west side of the airport, or the right, or the east side of the airport? That is the real question. Oh, well, my needle seems to be lining up right here, so I'm inclined to think this is our runway. Okay, well let's bring it in. Yep, yeah, this is where we need to be. Okay, folks. Strap yourselves in, we are coming in to land. Alright, let's get flaps one. I think we should be good for gear two, so we get our gear down. bit of ballooning there, but other than that, we should be good to go. 2, Why, thank you, Mr. Radar Altitude Man. It's going to call him Ralph for short. Okay, we appear to be on a pretty decent light slope here. I can't see any pappy lights, pappy or vasy lights for that matter. Trim us up a touch, though. Trim for speed, coming at about 100 knots. 
I imagine that's probably a little fast for this thing, but considering the fact that it pretty much stalls at about 80 knots, um, yeah, we'll have to adjust accordingly. Alright, quick look outside and then we'll take a look at the Bell Geode landing cam. Okay, looks like our winds are coming slightly from the left. It's not much of a crosswind. But either way, I'm going to swing us out to the right a little here. There we go. That should do the trick. Alright, now let's take a look at the Bell Geode Cam. The landing cam. Almost there. I'm going to start pulling the power back. Trying to aim for the touchdown marker just past the threshold. Thank you, Ralph. That's Ralph, the radar altimeter. Okay. And let's go outside. 200. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. There we go, folks. We made it. Woohoo! Alright, I think I passed my turn off, though, so I am going to be doing a little bit of creative U turns here. And we'll head on down to the terminal for you. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed our little flight from Aspen to Denver. As soon as I park this bird, we will call it done. Aerofly FS2 is officially released. That happened a little while ago, not too long ago. Ever since then, they've been trying to keep up the pace as far as updates and whatnot. So do not be too surprised if you see some more good stuff coming from Aerofly or from IPAX in the very near future. For now, I'm going to revel in all this beauty that is Denver International Airport. This is one airport that I've never been to in real life. I've always wanted to visit. But again, this is what plays to IPAX's strength. The difference in elevation as far as the uh, runways and the little spots in between. Even the sloping taxiway here. All of that adds to the realism of this place. And folks, it looks outright amazing. Wow. Alright, well as I stated, it's probably going to take me a little while to get taxiing back into my parking spot, or at least finding a designated parking spot. I don't want to subject you to all of that, because Denver is a pretty long taxi. So I'm going to take this time right now to thank you as always for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I have been flying in Aerofly FS2. And we have been flying in the Beechcraft King Air that comes stock with Aerofly FS2. Colorado, of course, is a free DLC. So be sure to go on Steam and grab that for your Aerofly flying goodness. And you too can have this experience that I'm having right now here in Denver. Wow. It's so good that I'm about half tempted to ask where the lounge is so that I can get a drink. Awesome stuff. 
All right, folks, that will do it for me. So I am signing out. This is Bell Geode. It's been a pleasure speaking with you all. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one. Ciao!